I love Paul Sellers. He's a wealth of woodworking knowledge, and I've learned a lot from him from his videos online, so please check him out if you haven't. Um, he has a video where he makes a frame saw, and I have been wanting a frame saw with a very thin blade that I could use like a fret saw. So I decided to, excuse me, I decided to try and uh, make one like he did. So the first thing I did was get my pieces of wood and uh, roughly mark out uh, the sizes so that I had the dimensions correct. And then after that it was off to the drill press to see if I could drill a hole in my very thin uh, leftover bandsaw blade, which I was able to do, luckily. This blade is only a quarter of an inch or six millimeters wide. I then went over to the bandsaw, cheated, but I wanted to have a kerf that was the same size as the blade that I was using. So this was the easiest method to cut it and be sure it was straight. I then started marking out my mortises uh, on both the sides and the center uh, support piece. This isn't that difficult, and if you want to see how to do it uh, in more detail, please check out Paul Seller's video on making a bow saw, because it's basically the same thing. I used a roll of tape to make my arc instead of a can, but um, that seemed appropriate considering the size of the wood that I was using. Then it was off to making my mortises. I always love to make mortises with a chisel for some reason. It just blows me away that you can make a, a flat square hole in a piece of wood with a chisel. But anyway, so after I finished making the center mortise for the straight part, there was the curves on the side that I had to cut out. And again, I used my chisel and I started by putting uh, little cuts all the way down to the mark of the curve on the outside. And then I took a paring chisel and pared away the waste as much as possible. Tried to get it really smooth. Uh, the wood I was using is much harder than the pine that Paul Sellers uses in his video. So it was uh, a little more difficult, but in the end it came out pretty well. I took some sandpaper and I put it around a dowel approximately the same diameter as the curves that I was making. And I used that to uh, smooth out these curved portions of the mortise. I then went on to cutting my uh, tenons. And the tenons have a center part that's straight, and then the shoulders are curved so that they can fit into the curved portions of the uh, handles. So I just cut down to the center line and then kind of arced the saw over, then flipped it on its side and cut away the circular parts. to the chisel and just cleaned up the outside a little bit, make it a little smoother, a little more presentable. It came out pretty good, but the shoulders themselves are very thin because of the, uh, the wood itself is thin. That turned out to be a problem, which I'll explain later. After I finished that, I curved the ends of the tenon because they need to be able to move a little bit uh, vertically when they're inside the mortises because when you're putting tension on the bow saw, obviously the handles are going to move inward at the top, so that needs to be able to do to slide a little bit inside the mortise. Then I cut a little notch in the top of the two handles to catch the string, or rather to hold the string in place so that it doesn't slide off. Standard stuff here, nothing special. Oh, ping, I like that. Flick that last piece right off. I then used some spoke shaves to carve a little bit of a handle on one side to make it a little more comfortable, a little more ergonomic. Now this was the hardest part of the whole build. I had put two holes that I was going to line up with the hole in the blade and then uh, hammer a two millimeter in diameter steel pin through the whole assembly to keep the blade in place. The problem was lining up the hole in the blade with the hole in the wood. So I took a flashlight and I shined it through the dog hole uh, from the bottom of my bench to try and line up the holes and then tried to tap this pin in. Unfortunately, it was a little bit off-center and the blade got stuck and I 
couldn't figure out which way to pull it in order to center the hole. And I got a little over rambunctious and tried to force it. And when I did so, I heard a ping and I broke the blade. Because the blade was thin to begin with. So then I had to remove the pin, which is a whole other story I won't go into. I got another piece of blade and drilled some more holes in it and was able to force the pins through it this time. I decided to change the design so that it works a little more like a conventional fret saw. So I put curves, large curves, in the outside of the handles so that I could slide the blade in with the pin already through the holes. This I thought was going to work fantastic. And for a time it did. So then it was ready to assemble the saw. I got some paracord and wrapped that around the top, tied a square knot in it to make sure it wasn't going to cut off. And then I got my piece of wood to start tensioning the blade. This was kind of scary because I didn't know if those pins were going to hold, but luckily they did and I was able to tension up the saw. So after that, it was time to give it a test run. And disaster. The blade busted. Great, I was thinking. What am I going to do now? I wasn't sure whether I would be able to use the same thin blade, so I wound up getting another old bandsaw blade that was a little bit thicker and put holes in that one. That went together a lot easier, and I figured there would be more meat on it to hold the blade so it would crack. And I was right. Unfortunately, it was a little too thick to make curved cuts, which I wanted to. And the uh, saw itself wasn't tracking straight, as you can see. So I basically made a useless saw. <laughs> so I was thinking, how can I fix this? What's wrong with the saw? I tried to troubleshoot it. I found that the tenons on the middle portion were a little bit loose, which caused the saw to rack when I would tension it. So I went back and made the tenons a little better so that they fit a little better. And this seemed to solve the tracking problem to a certain extent, at least on a rip cut. When I switched it over to do a cross cut, I found that the, um, the saw would again drift to the right, even though I was trying to keep it straight. So I found that it was indeed racking. As you can see, it's uh, not quite straight. And the reason for that is that the centerpiece uh, is smaller in width than the handles, which means that this curved shoulder isn't as thick as it needs to be to keep that centerpiece from racking. So I just have to make another centerpiece with thicker wood. Lesson learned.